Real, wait. <laughs> I started singing before I opened up paint. That's a rookie mistake. For any aspiring YouTubers, don't do that. That was just a test you passed. <clears throat> Real YouTubist share conceptual ideas, and they also have very good intros that they share with the viewers. Viewists, hello. Um, let's see, guy, boy. <laughs> anyway, hello. Um, okay, so, here's the deal. That was an awful clap. Can I try again? It was alright. Pokemon is a game that is unlike many other competitive games, and one of the main things that goes into that is the fact that there are two primary aspects of the game, whereas most other games only have one. Um, in Pokemon, those are team building and battling. So, uh, I think a lot of players, when they think about Pokemon or competitive Pokemon, they only think about the battling aspect, and what I mean by that is that, like, you know, the actual, I'm, I, I'm in a tournament, I'm playing against somebody else, right? But there's a whole additional battle that goes on in the matchups between the teams. And I've talked about some of the concepts that go into this before, but yeah, it's not like other games in the sense that like, if you play chess, right, your pieces are always the same, right? The, the knight can only move in so many ways, etc. If you play melee or, or any smash game, right? Like, you know, each character only has a limited number of moves. So Fox, you know, only has, every back here is the same aside from, you know, interaction with Stanley and stuff like that. And so basically, like, in Pokemon, it's not like that. You have this whole extra dimension, and, and it doesn't matter if you're the best player in the world. If you show up with a bad team, you're probably not going to do that well in a tournament. Or you're, it's at least a lot harder to do well in a tournament. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because I've been doing coaching. I do about one session a day via Medify. I've been really happy with the service, and I've actually really been enjoying coaching. I feel like it's really rewarding for me to kind of impart my knowledge and to see other people improve. And I end up talking a lot about team building, because even when players come to me and they say, Hey, Wolf, I want to work on skills that are explicitly battle skills right predictions um you know team preview um you know risk management a lot of these skills that are they only really show up in the battle it's difficult for me to talk about them in isolation because so much of, of how a team plays is dependent on how the team is built and i think that this is a concept that a lot of people don't really realize and so basically what i want to do today is just make a really quick intro uh video about to kind of team building and, and my approach and my process and some things like that and just talk about some of the more uh yeah theoretical stuff that goes into it so that maybe it can help you become better as an aside, I'm obviously not posting as much VGC content right now. That's just because I'm not really in a mood to play VGC right now. Um, I do recognize that, that that's like why some people watch my channel and I apologize. But for me, it's very important to not force myself to do something that I enjoy when I'm not in the mood to do it or when I don't want to do it. And so with, that's kind of where VGC is at right now for me. I still love VGC. I'll still play in the future. I'm not like, this isn't a permanent thing. But since I really, my, my main drive is tournaments and my main tournaments that I care about are live events. It's obviously going to be a period where there's some downtime. So, um, yeah, I do apologize for people who want more VGC content. But, um, yeah, it'll return at some point in the future. Probably not too far out. Also, if it's not clear, none of this is scripted. I'm not, like, reading off of anything. So, yeah, it'll probably be a little disjointed. But with that need, hopefully it should be fine. Anyway, yeah. When you are building a team, you start out with an idea. I think that that's something that is central regardless of how good you are and how you want to play the game. I will obviously be sharing how I build teams. These are, like, teams that are meant to be in tournaments. But you should be able to apply the theory regardless of your goal. So... An idea could be something as simple as, I want to beat the most popular Pokemon. Or it could be something as, you know, as simple as, I like the Pokemon Lucario and I want to build around Lucario. Your essential idea will in many ways define the direction your team goes in, but it's not, you know, you can build teams for different reasons. Not every team has to be a team that you want to win a tournament for. Um, so, okay, yeah, with that in mind, we're going to take a look at how I build teams. Is I normally start by building teams, and of course you can do this in many ways. You can pick your favorite Pokemon, you can pick a Pokemon that you think looks strong, for any a number of reasons. Um, the, site, the site I'm on now is called Peakalytics, peakalytics.com. They have a bunch of good resources, and one of these resources that they have is that you're able to see usage stats for VGC, current VGC format. And so we can see that Incineroar is the most used, it's on about 33% of teams. Regilek is on 30%, 27% Landorus, et cetera, et cetera. You can scroll down pretty far here. Like you can see like even Pokemon that are almost never used, like, I don't know, Dedenne, Cremorant. Um, like I can go down very far. I saw Fletchling a second ago, right? Nickit, right? Um, like these are Pokemon that are effectively never used. Oh, but these are zero percent. Yeah, these are zero percent usage. So you can go down like as far as it goes. Torakat's a little bit Togetic, <laughs> relic into the life fire, right? And what I like to do with this is I don't take like the you know the usage stat as law. Um, you can see different information. You can see which moves are popular. You can see common teammates like popular items. Like I wouldn't recommend taking this data as like objective hard truth and like every instant I'm gonna play is gonna have these moves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what I like to do with the data is I like to kind of look through and I like to look at trends, right? And by trends I mean what are common shared things that I think could do well against the, the most popular Pokemon? So some very basic things, just if we look at Instant or Regilecki, we might say, okay, ground types are strong. Ground types that don't care about Intimidate are strong. You know, like Pokemon that are faster than Alecky could be strong. And like for Alecky and Landorus, like we might say, okay, like they're both relatively frail. Um, well, actually Alecky and Landorus are kind of difficult. They don't have that many shared weaknesses, but you might say, all right, like um, a Pokemon like Mamoswine, right? A Pokemon that is something that could do well into both. Or you might say Landorus or Liboom, these are both weak to ice, right? 
Um, or it might be something as simple as I think that like Dragapult can be strong, right? Like, and I think Dragapult can be strong because it, it hits neutral and does a lot of damage to Aleki, Landy, Rillaboom, right? Dragapult's not the best example because there's actually a lot of Pokemon that, you know, do pretty well with it right now. But like if Grimmsnarl and P2 weren't here, right? You might say, okay, Max Phantasm hits nearly every Pokemon on this list for neutral damage. And so um, that's like, that's legitimate, right? And so, or you might say, okay, Ghost Typing is really strong because Ghost hits a lot of Pokemon for neutral. And so basically what I like to do is I like to kind of go through trends and I like to say, okay, here's some things that I notice and here's some things, and then I make a list for myself. And a list isn't normally a particular Pokemon. It's normally more things like, you know, this type could be strong or like speed control is really, really important or, you know, not being weak to red, you like electro, electro rub is important. And I like to try like a bunch of different things and just kind of compile a list of like, based on what's currently popular, what are some common trends and what, where are good starting points to look for exploiting some of the weaknesses. I think a lot of players get stuck when they are thinking about, you know, I want to build a team, but I don't know where to start. And so there's multiple starting points. This isn't the only one. Sometimes I'll just be like, hey, you know which Pokemon I think could be strong? This Pokemon, right? And, you know, then you just test it and you go from there. And so um, that's one way of doing it. But another way is to look at the, look at what's popular and say, okay, like based on what's popular, this is, these are some things that I could be strong. So I remember when I was building for Players Cup 2, which is the tournament I won with Colossal for the Global Finals, I remember looking at the metagame and for whatever reason I said, I think that rock types are really strong right now. Um, and I said a couple other things as well. Like I think I said, okay, I think I want taunt on my team on all my serious teams. I want to have taunt. I care about speed control. It's something I care about in general. But yeah, I, I was like interested in rock types. So I tested a bunch of different rock types. I tested Stack Attack, um, I tested Regirock and I tested Colossal, which were three of the better rock types in my opinion at the time. And yeah, one of them was good. And um, of course, not every single time that you try to build a team is it going to turn out well, but um, it's important to keep trying because you can't build good teams without building bad teams as well, and you can't build teams without building teams. Uh, or, you know, you can't build any teams, good or bad, without actually trying to build teams. Um, of course, not everybody likes to build teams. Some players prefer to use teams that other people build. That's totally fine, too. Like, that's valid. But if you're interested in, in, in like, eventually building good teams, then you have to build teams even if, like, they aren't, you know, as, as strong as you'd like them to be. I also think that, like, what a lot of players don't realize is that team building is, like, exceptionally difficult. Like... In my opinion, 80 to 85% of the difficulty in Pokemon comes from, like, team building, and 15 to 20% comes from, like, actually playing. Like, um, if I could, like, have my skill level, but always have, like, really strong teams, like, consistently, I think I'd be, like, overall better performing, in my opinion. That, that might be hyperbole, but, like, yeah, that's my opinion. So, yeah. So, basically, that's when you start a team. When you're filling out a team, of course, it's, it's, it's always important to consider, like, um, what your Pokemon do well and what the weaknesses are. So, for example, if you were building around Regieleki, you might say, okay... This Pokemon has good speed control, it hits pretty hard, it's good, like, Electro-type is a good neutral type, but the weaknesses are it's really bad when it loses speed control, such as against Trick Room, against Tailwind, against Venusaur, things that move before it, um, and it's also really bad against certain types, so Amoongus, or some grass types, like Bulky, Rillaboom, Amoongus, even Venusaur, and then ground types are also, like, really, really dangerous, so you might start to think, okay, I want to pair this with a Pokemon that can handle those weaknesses, right? In addition to handling the weaknesses, you also want to add Pokemon that are going to capitalize on the strength. So, for example, if you pick a Lucky as a starting point and you have Electro on, on your Regi Lucky, then you want to make sure that you're actually having Pokemon that complement as well as like cover for the weaknesses. So, if you're going to add Electro Web, you don't want to be running a bunch of slow Pokemon, right? Because then Electro Web isn't really going to set you up for anything in a lot of like situations. Um, this also goes like with things like Trick Room. Like I've seen players add Trick Room to teams, but in the end, they just like don't have any Pokemon that really like benefits from Trick Room. Like just make sure that everything on your team when you add it is added with intentionality, right? Like think through the decisions because so many games are won or lost in the team builder. It's important to like put a lot of like thought into the decisions that you make um, when building a team. If you're, if you're trying to build a team, which whose goal is to win tournaments. Um, yeah, team building is really deep and I could probably talk about it for like an extended period of time. So I think this might just be like a good little intro, but yeah, I just wanted to share some thoughts that I had on the subject and yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. I just really want to, I wanted to kind of give a primer for team building and hopefully if you're interested in playing Pokemon competitively, if you're interested in playing Pokemon and getting better, this allows you to kind of see beneath the hood a little bit and see, um, talk a, like, you know, this gives you, should give you a little bit more insight into at least my process as someone who's been doing this for a while and, and, um, you know, give you some insight into like kind of some of the things that I think about when I'm building a team, but yeah, uh, we'll end it here. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you want to see more kind of videos like this. Um, obviously, I know this is a little bit more intellectual or like uh, high level conceptual stuff than some of my more common stuff, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was interesting, so I thought I'd share it. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and let me know if you want to see more of this stuff. Bye-bye.